Don't make any money at it. Don't sell them. I've sold three cars in 40 years. This is pretty much the pinnacle of Ford performance. If you take this car and do a little work on it, take the smog off, do a little bit of tuning to it, uh, this becomes a beast. An email from the ultimate collector of 1971 Mustangs, Findley Ledbetter. What's the fascination with 71s? I mean, had one, had one in high school. Yeah, started with one. And he just found an original 1971 Super Cobra Jet Mustang. Black, located in, of all places, this salvage yard in Missouri. But the car's not outside. It's back there in one of those sheds. And we're going to go dig it out. Why am I selling it? Yeah. You don't understand how many, how many cars I got. How many, cal how many cars do you have? Cars? Uh-huh. Oh. Mineral Wells, Texas, where Finley's latest barn find is part of a plan to buy every black Super Cobra Jet four-speed Mustang that Ford ever built, among other 71s, at his <coughs> blue oval car barn, driven by the enthusiasm and wealth of this one man. We take them off the showroom floor and drive them. Because they sit on the floor and fall apart. It takes hundreds of man hours a year to keep them in shape. And then we bring them over here and we do run them up to temperature and go through them. And this over here is a local barn find set since 1976. Who's this young man here working? Nice. Chad, go ahead. Hi. Hey. I'm Chad. Jerry. Nice to meet you, Jerry. I just help Finley maintain all the cars. These are just my cars. This is just my garage. I don't sell them. I, I don't trade them. I, this is just my collection. I've got about 60 cars and I swap them in and out every five or six months and maintain them, you know. It's my job just to find them and put them in better shape for the next guy. So that's my total charge. Boss 351, sure. Anything 1971 in high performance, you're going to find here. This is a 71 Mustang Cobra Jet J-Code four-speed convertible. This is supposed to be, according to uh, some Mustang aficionados, the rarest muscle car ever built. Another rarity, the 71 Coupe, 86 built with the 429 Cobra Jet. People walk in and it's free. I said we have about 50 to 100 people a day that come through. All 70s and 71s, love it. Just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, Finley has some 70s tossed into the collection, like this Boss 302 and this Boss 429. 69 Mach 1, sure, beside another 71 Super Cobra Jet. I've got about 40 71 cars in my collection. The majority of them are restored cars, but some of them are original cars, like this one here is an original 9,000 mile survivor. I'm working on eight restoration projects right now from three or four Boss 351s, a couple of Super Cobra Jet Mustangs. These are the actual shifters out of those eight cars. So I'll take, disassemble these, overhaul, recondition these shifters, re -chrome plate them. So you have eight restorations going on at one time? Right now, eight. This is a 71 high performance Mustang from headlight to taillight. So if you needed a headlight can, you would go to this end. If you needed a gas cap, you would walk to the other end. So all the parts are organized in order. These are distributors, all date-coded correct distributors for various date-coded cars, ignition components. And then behind that would go the carburetors because the carburetor is physically behind the distributor in the car. The entire car, all the parts are organized in order of which they go in the car. It makes it easier to walk to and find the correct part. We do get good quality cars from time to time, but we kind of specialize in the ones that no one else wants to take a, to take a shot at. For instance, this car on the top, I bid against four or five other people for. It came out of a scrapyard in West Virginia. It's a 71 Super Cobra Jet sports roof, which is ultra rare. There's only a couple of them. It's a 429 Super Cobra Jet Jayco drag pack car, and it will be a brand new car in about five years. This is, a, again, a very rare Super Cobra Jet black Jayco 411 drag pack car with white Mach 1 interior. This is a 70 Torino Cobra. That uh, is my weekly driver. And this is a 71 Cobra. It's a real low mileage car that came out of the desert in California. These are Cobra Torinos, huh? Uh -huh. This is a, a J-Code four-speed CJ car, but the reason that car is here is it is a 
beige with white interior car and they only ever made one of them. The next one is a 429 Super Cobra Jet black car just like the car that came out of Missouri. It's only got 30,000 miles on it but it's had a tough life. Uh, this car will be a complete restoration. Uh, metal work alone on this car will be four or five hundred hours. Uh, the next car is a 70 Z28 that I found with 18,000 miles on it. Kept it as a survivor car. Uh, the next one is a Boss 351 that's waiting on restoration. Then a Grabber Blue Boss 351 under the tarp that's waiting on complete restoration. Uh, above that is a parts car. That one's going to be cut up for parts, Jerry. If we walk this way, this is the typical result. If you were to look at the sports roof car that's on the top that I got out of West Virginia, this car didn't look much better than that when I got it. But in two or three years, this is what it looked like. There again, this car has about 2,000 hours and about $80,000 in investment to get it from that point to this point. Uh, all original Ford metal, uh, mostly original parts. We do use some reproduction parts. If we can't find the original part, then we continue to search for the original part and when we find it, we go back and put it on the car. This is another 429 Super Cobra Jet drag pack car, identical to the car on the top that came out of West Virginia, but this is a Mach 1. This is a, a, an interesting case because this was a Restomod and we saved it from Restomod hell. Uh, we do a lot of that where we find cars that were converted to Restomods in the 80s and then we take them and convert them back to original cars. But this is what it looked like. It was all red. They'd painted the bumpers, all the chrome. They'd lowered the car, put a leather interior in it, power windows, power doors, uh, aluminum, all aluminum, top end on the engine, chrome. Uh, look how low the car was. It was undrivable. This is the list of parts that the original owner had kept from the original car in the garage in Ohio in Akron. So we were able to go get all the pieces and parts that it took to put the car back together because he had maintained it all and kept it all. The original block was there, all the original engine components, everything he had taken off the car he had kept and that's real unusual. Normally we have to go hunt all that down. So this is what we ended up building from what we started with. And now it's back to being something that I can pass forward to the next owner uh, feeling good about instead of a, of a Bresto mod. Well, tell me about the 71 you bought because... Uh, this is the identical car, uh, are very close. I found this car in Massachusetts. It actually had a tree growing through it. Uh, I've got about 2,000 hours in restoration in this car, a lot of metal work. It's a 71 Super Cobra Jet drag pack car, just like the car in Missouri, same color. Here's the before picture and the after. The difference being they're both J-code Ram air cars, but this is a four-speed car. The other one's an automatic car. So, let's go get it in Adrian, Missouri at Howard's Auto Salvage, where we meet Howard Stevens. Most, most of the stuff I sell is somebody that's fixing that old car, you know. I'm Charlie. I help Howard. But Charlie's doing all the hard work. The cows and the salvage yard both. Uh, and then there's Bob. He's probably the neighbor's cat, but I don't know. Maybe they didn't want her. She got a Bob tail, so we call her Bob. She's my best friend. <laughs> we'll go look at some of these and see what you think. Some of these you had quite a while? Some of them I've had a long time. Some of them I haven't, but most of it I have. Oh, and if you're wondering, that black car is a 40-40 coupe. Got a 327 Chevy in it. Put a Camaro Supreme on the front and it's got a board Warner four speed and a 57 Chevy rear end. The 71 Mustang never advertised, but people find out. I had that Vanderbrink auction lady here a month ago and she, I told her I thought it was a $100,000 car and she agreed with me. But you never know how an auction is gonna go, you know. Come in. I would bet that's the Mustang under that cover. Look where you're going here. <laughs> that looks like a nice car. 39,000 miles. What is it, 312? 292. What about this? 63 Ford convertible. My sister bought that new. She was 29 when she bought that car. She, she'll be 80 next month. She's come one day and said she's Tired of walking around it and she wanted to know if I wanted to buy it and I said no. 
I said, what do you want for it? She said she wanted $30,000. I said, no. So then she left. Come back about three weeks later. I sat there for a while and I thought it'd be a real shame if somebody got it and tore it up. I told her, bring me the title and I'll pay you for it. I think that was in 05 when I bought that car from her. So then I and Charlie didn't go after it very quick. A couple of weeks later, she calls me up and said, are you going to come get your car out of my garage? <laughs> we did, and we had to jack it up under the rear end and pull it away from the wall a little bit. She had it right next to the wall. So she said, you're going to skin this car up. I said, no, we're not. She came one day. Car cover wasn't on the car. She said, how come this car is not covered up? I said, well, we were looking at it. Well, you need to cover it up. We did. We covered it up. <laughs> she can't tell about her. Pretty nice car, huh? We're about to find out just how nice from... I'm Mike Farrell, and um, I restore 71 Mustangs for Finley Ledbetter. Which explains the sign on Mike's trailer, the Blue Oval Ranch. Kind of an extension of the Blue Oval Car Barn, which has its own website. What do you do? You just work for him? Strictly, you just do stuff for him? Yes. Good to see you. You too. How was your trip? Yeah, long. Seven hours. 365 miles due north beautiful day i guess you met this guy a time or two yeah mike had already found the car and made the deal for finley a few weeks earlier okay. this is his private stash in here did you know that, <laughs> oh, is that right? yeah. this is the uh, keeper stuff <laughs> yeah i got some more of it too <laughs> look at that 35 ford and what year is that pickup 36. the 35 ford coupe when i bought that in 1961 i gave 275 dollars for it of course, I had painted it and put an engine in it and so forth, but in the pickup, I've had it for about 35 years. I can't tell you exact year, but I, I've had it about 35 years. And then when did you get in the salvage yard business? 1970. <laughs> One might think that he likes black. <laughs> All these cars, trucks, everything. Black. What's under that cover back there? I didn't see that other one. That's black, too. Uh, so... Mercury. Oh, it's a Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should call this car Bob. We're going to clean it up as best we can, uh, leaving it as original as we can. But it'll be running, driving, uh, safe. Yeah. What's he bringing in? Pull that window down, Charlie. I wanted to stop the Mustang at the entrance of the garage where we had pretty good ambient light to take pictures. Charlie, is that hard to turn? A little bit. Wow, look at the fit of that rear bumper, how even it is to the body. And that beautiful original acrylic enamel paint. Talk about the ram air then, what? Well, let's just open the hood, be easy to show. You've got two ducts in the hood and they're controlled by engine vacuum there are flappers in here that when you accelerate it opens flaps and lets fresh air in through the plenum into the air cleaner ram air it was an option for the cobra jet and the super cobra jet this is just a seal comes down on it forces the cold air into the air cleaner what turned a cobra jet into a super cobra jet was the drag pack all drag packs had to be ordered with Either a V-Code 391 traction lock, as seen on our Mach 1, or a 411 Detroit locker, which is a Y-Code, as seen on this Super Cobra Jet 71 that Norris Ford put together back in the day. A little tweaking. How about that for a beast? Now, what made it a drag pack under here? Show us the drag pack stuff. Well, the only thing uh, that I... That I can show you what's underneath the air cleaner here, and that's a Holly carburetor. Okay. The Cobra Jets. This is a photo from my files. Came with a Quadra Jet. Yep, a 730 CFM GM carburetor with a Ford part number. The Super Cobra Jet, and notice no decal on the air cleaner lid, came with it's a 780 CFM Holly. Now, is there a number on that? Yes, it should be right there, and I don't have my glasses on, and it's a nice, it's a... D1ZF9510X is the automatic Super Cobra Jet, Y for the four-speed. So that's the difference in a Cobra Jet and a Super Cobra Jet. That's one difference. The other difference is the Cobra Jets had a hydraulic camshaft. These have a solid lifter, more aggressive camshaft. 
Plus you have your nodular crank and rods. Just a, it's beefed up motor. Most things under the hood other than normal maintenance items are original to the car. I mean, there's a few things. Uh, originally these engines had water tubes to run back for the heater, but they, they failed. I'm sure, you know, there's been maybe a water pump, uh, maybe not, hard to tell. Uh, gaskets, maybe a few gaskets have been um, changed out. Look at this battery uh, tag. That's the original battery tag that came on the car. No kidding. What's left of it? Watch the reactions when we ask about replacing this unreadable battery tag. Here's a new battery tag. What are you going to do with that? Um, I'd probably, hopefully, leave it. You're going to leave that? Well, um, it's original. Okay. Well, that's a... <laughs> you're sounding like my Wait, sister. come here a minute. You're sounding like my sister. It's original. <laughs> leave it alone. Yeah. A long time ago, there used to be a little strap hanging. Hey, maybe it still is. There's a little strap hanging down underneath it or something. I told her one day, you want me to cut that off? No, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so your sister wouldn't change anything. Oh, no. She yeah. left it original, huh? Yeah, she wanted it original, yeah. I'll tell you another one pretty soon when you turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah, so you're going to leave that paper. That's interesting. I need your light right here. You see how that little red, kind of a little red streak there? On the alternator? Yes. Can you see the red? Oh, yeah. Just a, mm -hmm. It's kind of pink now, but okay. when they came out, the part number here was highlighted in pink, and that's what's left of it. So you can just leave that, right? I hope so. When you're doing something like this, you you got to decide where you're going to start and where you're going to stop. You know, are we going to make it look pretty, or are we going to leave it like it came from the factory? You know, and and Finley will have make those calls and I'll just um, do it the way he wants it. What's really nice about this car is it still has all the original smog equipment on it. It's got the air pump. A lot of people took them off and threw them away because this drains a little power from the motor. This is a fold down rear seat car. I think they call them sports rear seat, sports deck rear seat. And you can put your snow skis through there. So the carpet just looks like new, doesn't it? It does. Yep. Any 71 Mustang with 15 inch rims got a space saver spare. This, this thing's never been on the ground. And then they had a little hose and uh, a bottle, air bottle, that's underneath here. And I checked the other day and it's there. I wonder if the jack's even ever been out of it. What about that letter you just pulled up? What is that? Uh, this is a sticker that's supposed to go on the spare rim, tire rim. It's supposed to sit in here someplace so that you, and it's got the instructions to your customer. Oh, this is BF Goodrich. So that, it's a BF Goodrich tire and they sent this out. All right, what about the rest of the car? How can you tell it's original paint? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can just see this has never been redone. Um, the tag's got nothing around it. There's no overspray any place in here. That's the bottom of the argent. See how the car's painted argent down on the bottom? Uh -huh. Well, that's how they taped it off when they sprayed it at the factory. What about the interior here? Well, that's the Mach 1 uh, sports interior with the, the stripes. Well, the interior smells like brand new still. Nice. Wear and tear on a car with 80,000 miles is going to be a lot different than something like this where the inside looks like it's never been sat in. Right, it's an automatic, but can't turn this car down. These door panels are perfect. Uh, there might be something on it. Looks like, I mean, there. that's about as nice a door panel that's 52 years old as you'll ever see. Did you hear that, I Howard? Did. I did. He said, that's a nice door panel, 52 years old as you'll ever see. I mean, the interior is... Do you want the car back now? Well, yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Okay. There we go. Yeah, good job there. Yeah. I can see it. 18,300 exactly. I'm smelling that new interior. Doesn't 
that smell good. This is 1971 in here. It didn't get out in the sun very much. I mean, it wasn't out, she didn't leave it outside. Don't you wish you'd told your sister to come down here? She doesn't even know you're selling this. If I tell her, if I break down and tell her, she'd be tickled to death and it's going somewhere. All right. Where nobody will tear it up. That's the thing. Like you open the glove box? Yeah, 17761 was an oil change in 1989. Show me that close up. Right there in front of my camera. Okay. Here's another one. This does is. It say, uh, does it say Porter's Garage on there? Do what? Does it say Porter's Garage on there? Man that worked up at Ford, he started his own garage and she would let him work up, but she wouldn't let nobody else touch it. But he was just about as picky as she was. Here's the last oil change. 18,144 miles mm -hmm. in yeah. 1993. Yeah, see, it didn't get drove hardly any. This is, oh, this is uh, Porter's Garage. Did say Porter's Garage? Yes. Yeah, I said after that Porter died, she didn't have nobody to work on it. So then it set, and she wouldn't let nobody even touch it, look at it, anything. This looks like the original tag that went on the sun visor with the starting instructions. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh she saved everything. Wow. Saved What's everything. on the, show me the other side of that. What is that? It's just starting instructions. It went on like this, and then you would see starting instructions, and then you'd flip it down, and there they are. Wow. Not that people needed help, but some, maybe some did. I don't know. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, remarkable. Look at the chrome around the instruments. And the knobs. They look brand new. We're ready. This is a great find. Turn to the right, Charlie. Real hard. Like I said, anybody can take a car or what's left of a car and put it back together and make it look really pretty. Does this body have any imperfections on it? Uh, I saw one little chip in the back. You know, they're only original once and this car is still exactly the way, you know, for the most part, the way it came from Ford. That means a lot to people. You just don't see a lot of low mile original cars. And that's probably the most important thing. Anybody can take a car and make it look pretty, but not everybody can make one look like this one.